the first video, I'll talk about what is happening around us globally as well as in India, the overall macro picture. Note that my views may be different from yours. That's perfectly okay. Feel free to disagree, put your comment. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Maybe I'll stand corrected. India right now is in the middle of the elections. The next prime minister will be decided on 4th of June. There are a lot of uncertain voices at the time of recording this video. The existing government may be re-elected or there may be a new government. There could be a lack of majority which will lead to a coalition which will not be that great for the economy. However, it is an event. It will end by approximately week 2 of June. We will know which government is in power. Each government has their own favorites when it comes to industries, industrialists. Some things may change. Everything may remain same. Beyond our own vote, this is beyond our control. We can react to it. We can adjust to it. There is no point in worrying beyond that. In my opinion, Indian economy is going through some key problems. First is hyperinflation. I'm not talking about the published number of inflation. I'm talking about the inflation that hits us. That is way higher and beyond control for many of us who have limited income. Measure the inflation that hits you realistically. Take the top 5 or 10 categories where you used to spend most in the last year, 1 year, 2 year, whatever you can remember from the past. Put the today's number there and measure the percentage change. How much you are paying extra today? For example, if your child's fees was 1 lakh per year last year, and if it is 1 lakh 10,000 this year, the education inflation is 10%. Second is mass jobs are not getting created. Specialized jobs are getting created, but a lot of mass jobs are getting automated or eliminated. People are not reskilling and that is leading to mass unemployment. This is right now leading to people over leveraging. There are a lot of options to borrow money right now. So people just like in the Western countries are managing via taking loans, but they don't have the capacity to repay those loans holistically. This will be a big problem in the coming years if people don't get jobs. Next one is what I call debasing of the currency, hyperinflation, printing of currency, US dollar getting more and more stronger. All of them are leading to significant devaluing of the Indian rupee. So think of it, whatever was 100 rupees say 4-5 years back is replaced by 200 rupee. Your purchasing power will remain same now, though the value is doubled. If your income has not doubled, however, you are getting poorer realistically. Demographic wise, some states in the country are progressing really fast. Some of them are laggards. The education opportunities and levels are also very, very disparate. So while we are one country, there is a lot of difference between various states and that difference is continuously increasing. Also, while we are proud of being the youngest country in the world, that is also a problem because so many young people become young adults every year. They need jobs. If they don't have jobs, then how would that youth contribute to the GDP, which is a general expectation for India's GDP doing well. One significant potential in India is there are so many women who don't work formally. That is the biggest opportunity and in fact a requirement for India doubling its size in terms of GDP. If you have to reach 7 trillion, women need to participate significantly more in the economy. The biggest influence on our economy is by the United States of America. The US economy is right now on steroids. The steroids are excessive printing of money. More than 90% of US currency that is there in circulation today, digitally or physically, has been printed in last few years, approximately after the pandemic. So while so many people have been predicting the fall of United States, still there is no currency to challenge the US dollar. It continues to enjoy the reserve currency status. Literally, there is no one to dethrone the USD. As a result, for now, US can print any amount of dollars that will keep taking their economy upward. Markets will continue to hit all-time highs. Companies will reach trillions dollar, 10 trillion dollar valuations. There is no one to stop them in terms of the value appreciation. However, just like I said, the debasing effect in context of India, it's there in US also. 10 years back when I used to go to US, I could buy so much in a $50 bill. Today, even in $100 or $200, US citizens can't really buy too much compared to what they could buy 10 years back. I don't know when this will end, but the end will terrible unless US government can find assets worth 30, 40 trillion dollars over four or five years to take care of their debt. Oil economics, there are three major powers who control the oil supply, Middle East, Russia and United States. If crude comes below $80, then the profitability of most companies operating on oil economics goes down considerably. So these three geographies are not interested at all in crude going down. The biggest consumers like India, countries in the EU, 
they have no option but to buy the oil at whatever rates exist. Hence, countries like India and China try to befriend, for example, Russia to get cheap crude oil that reduces their import bills and keeps the currency in some check. Whichever country is trade deficit, which means imports are more than exports, like India, not China, the crude going up is a big problem. The import bill suddenly goes up. In context of India, there is a bigger problem. We also export a lot of products that we produce out of crude as a result, government has to actually impose windfall tax kind of levies so that exports don't become more lucrative than domestic supplies. Otherwise, companies will start prioritizing exports over domestic consumption. Domestic supply will get hit and there will be scarcity. The prices can be controlled, but not the supply. Oil continues to play the most important role in running economies, more than perhaps wheat and rice. Wars. There are two major wars going on right now. One is a continued war between Russia and Ukraine. The other one which is going on in the Middle East right now between Iran and Israel. It is not just those countries. There are many, many countries involved indirectly in that war. In fact, both of these wars are actually proxy wars for what I call trade wars. Also in context of India, there are significant geopolitical tensions. There is no neighbor of India who is friendly with India. India may be friendly with them, but our neighbors are not friendly with us. The smaller ones as well as the bigger ones. For decades, we have been at war and major tensions with Pakistan as well as China. No government actually on both sides is interested in ending the tensions. It is an important weapon in the armor of most governments. But the wars do impact the economy significantly. We don't want wars to happen. We can't control them. However, we can make money out of them. And that's what we will learn over the course of time. There was a significant increase in certain sectors post-pandemic when there was a huge recovery going on in the economy. Salaries went through the roof, especially in the IT industry, which is among the largest industries in the country right now in terms of market cap of listed companies. Now, those price increases are actually hitting the company's profitability and most companies are trying to reduce the burden of salaries on their balance sheet. So, a significant amount of people's jobs are right now under threat. At the end of year, the net jobs will not reduce too much. However, there could be a significant reduction in which a lot of firing will involve people whose salaries are exorbitant. Those will be replaced by people with more reasonable salaries. Salary hikes in certain pockets may be high, but in general, the quantum of hikes will reduce over the course of next one or two years because the economies need to balance out the impact of the increase in last few years. Also, in many pockets, salary hikes are not adjusted to realistic inflation. In India, we have one advantage that people have significant saving rate. As a result, most people are able to sustain, but in realistic terms, they are getting poorer in terms of the net money they are able to save now and the inflation-adjusted corpus that they own. Also, when it comes to jobs, we need to do really something big to create more jobs at the lower levels. High-end white-collar jobs cannot be very high in quantity. They already exist, but that becomes a replacement kind of cycle. We need jobs at the lower level of the pyramid. That too, in very high volumes, corrodes every year. That will reduce unemployment, put money in the hands of masses. That is where ferocious consumption will strike and the GDP will skyrocket. Gold is among the oldest investment instruments that has been used in India. It dates back centuries. Even at the time of kings, the wealth was actually stored in coins and jewelry. If you go back in time, roughly two, three decades, gold has actually multiplied the wealth significantly. In year 2000, gold was 4,000 rupees per tola. Today, it is 73,000 rupees per tola. That's nearly a 20x gains in gold since the year 2000. Fixed deposits, one of the favorite instruments of India. They are actually not bad, but they are not investments. People say they don't want to take risk. For that, they are willing to pay 2 to 4% to the bank to keep their money, which means your corpus reduces by 2 to 4% in terms of inflation and taxation adjusted value every year. So your 100 rupees will become 98 or 97 rupees at the end of year in terms of your purchasing power if you are keeping your money in FDs. Having said that, FDs are not bad. They are actually a significant instrument in your war chest. We will talk about war chest in the next video. So don't avoid FDs. Make money from FDs using them as strategic instruments, not investments. Bonds. Till about two years back, we needed at least 10 lakh rupees to get invested into bonds. Then that limit was revised to roughly 1 lakh in case of significant number of bonds. Recently, RBI has released a circular where many bonds will have a minimum investment reduced to 10,000 rupees. There's a huge variety of bonds. The NBFC bonds with moderate to high risk, 
दे ऑफर एनी वेयर बिटवीन नाइन टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट रेट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन योर इन्वेस्टमेंट एपेटाइट बॉन्ड्स कैन एक्चुअली गिव यू अ पॉजिटिव इन्फ्लेशन एंड टैक्स एडजस्टेड रिटर्न म्यूचुअल फंड्स सिग्निफिकेंट पॉपुलेशन इंडिया टुडे इन्वेस्ट इन इक्विटी एज वेल एज बॉन्ड्स बाय म्यूचुअल फंड्स म्यूचुअल फंड्स आर नॉट बैड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इफ यू कैन डू बेटर देन म्यूचुअल फंड्स हावर म्यूचुअल फंड्स हैव सीवियर लिमिटेशंस सिग्निफिकेंट नंबर ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स इन द इंडियन इक्विटी मार्केट एक्चुअली एंटर द मार्केट पोस्ट पैंडमिक एंड आई हैव नॉट सीन अ मेजर फॉल दे हैव नॉट सीन म्यूचुअल फंड एन ए वीज क्रैश जनरल फिलोसफी इज दैट मार्केट विल रिकवर वंस अगेन देर आर फ्लॉज विद दैट फिलोसफी आई विल कवर दम इन सब्सिक्वेंट वीडियोज अगेन रिपीटिंग म्यूचुअल फंड आर नॉट बैड बट प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द इंस्ट्रूमेंट वेल दे डोंट गिव यू इक्विटी इक्वलेंट रिटर्न एंड देर विल बी सीवियर प्रॉब्लम इफ मार्केट क्रैश इन टर्म्स ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड इन माई ओपिनियन इक्विटी मोस्ट ऑफ अस हैव सीन द इक्विटी कर्व गोइंग अप लाइक दिस Beat from say 2000 to 2024 or more recent 2020 till 2024, the curves can be reverse exponential. Also, many of us have not seen that. There have been many bloodbaths in the past 2000, 2008, 2013 pandemic, a minor crash during the Ukraine war. Yes, if we zoom out over two decades, those may look minor, but there is bloodbath during crisis. So these are not the times to put leveraged money into the stock markets at current levels. Trading, there are multiple categories of trading. One is what we do in FNO. Only large players or people with large pockets and a good understanding make money in the FNO market. Common citizens always lose money. SEBI and RBI have said enough times ninety ninety five percent people lose their shirt in the FNO market completely. So unless you understand FNO, you are not going to multiply your wealth at all. You might end up dividing it, however, taking to zero or negative also maybe. The second level of trading is what people at times call swing trading. You buy low and you sell high in a period of say weeks or months. This is still doable if you can understand the movements of the market. The next level of trading is what FIs and DIs do. they operate in 3000 4000 5000 crore kind of numbers every day dis the biggest one is honorable president of india lic sbi these three are the top dis in the country most large mutual funds come in the di category they buy and sell 5000 6000 crores worth of stocks in cash every day fis also buy similar quantity most fis are traders they are not investors that is why government will never reduce the duties ses taxation etc on trading people will eventually not make money in the markets they will make losses only so they will never pay income tax but they will end up paying significant taxes in these trades if you are an options trader you might have noticed that your charges and taxation are actually lot higher than the net profit you ever make in the options trade many of us are waiting for interest rates to cool down Many of us have actually bought real estate with an assumption that interest rates will reduce in the months and years to come significantly. That may not happen in US as well as in India. Just take an example of India. Significant population in India today is investing in bonds. Bonds give nine to ten percent interest. If FD rates reduce and bond rate remain nine to ten percent, why would people give money to the bank? How will banks lend? Today, banks are already struggling with their casa, which is the balances in current accounts and saving accounts. These combined with FDs are not giving enough money to the bank to lend out because lending cycle is right now at a very high. So prepare to consume higher interest rates. Prepare to benefit from higher interest rates. Use them to your advantage. In the medium to long term, interest rates will cool down. They are not sustainable for the economy. The consumption cycle in auto and real estate, which is driven by loans, will not sustain at nine, ten, eleven percent kind of interest rates. That's not feasible. Consumption. All of us are going through forced consumption right now without even realizing. We are buying stuff that we don't need. It could be e-commerce platforms. It could be malls. There is a lot of peer pressure on us, on our children. we are spending the money we don't have to buy the stuff we don't need that's a reality for most of us that consumption does fuel the economy helps the gdp how you are going to be poorer not richer if you are a service class person if you are a business that benefits from this over consumption then yes you are going to become richer for example within the pandemic apple went from being a 1 trillion dollar company to 3 trillion dollar company the iphone prices in this period have nearly doubled have the manufacturing prices actually doubled answer is no there are two reasons for buying real estate the first one is to live in the house second is to make money from the investment the second one is typically inspired by someone who has made 
a lot of money in the real estate segment. We expect that we will end up with the same fate. We might make money in the short to medium term also. But one of my favorite quotes is, if you have doubled the money in real estate in about seven to eight years, you have not earned anything. In fact, if you have bought the property in a leverage manner on EMIs, you would actually lost money in that investment. Real estate in metros is going through crazy price hikes. It is a bubble. It will burst. I don't know when. If you don't believe me, look at what is happening in China since last two or three years. Their biggest real estate company went bankrupt. That has pushed a country of the size of China into literally a depression, a recession. Chinese economy has been sulking for nearly two, three years now, taking the entire world significant commodities down there.